Wondering if it's time to get your eyes checked? In this video, I'll walk you through some basic tests that you can do at home with me right now while watching this video that might help you know if your eyes are ready for an eye exam from your local optometrist. These are actual tests that I perform all the time with my very own patients in order to gather more information to help my patients see better and have better visual performance. By taking a couple minutes to go through them with me, you'll get to know your eyes better and you might even find out if your vision needs to be corrected with some eyeglasses. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Smith, and in this channel, I go over ways to help your eyes stay in the best shape possible by providing clinical knowledge, eye tips, and product tips to help your eyes see better and physically look better. Watching this video does not create a doctor-patient relationship, and the content in this video is intended for informational purposes only and should be applied at your own risk. That being said, let's jump right into the first eye test. Eye dominance. Here's how to find out which eye is your dominant eye. Start by looking at an object far away from you, like a digital clock on the microwave or a light switch on the wall. Next, with your hands below eye level, make a triangle with your hands while leaving a small opening in the middle for you to look through. If you can, make the opening fairly small, but not so small to where you can't see through it. As you're looking at the far away object and keeping your hands at arm's length away, raise your hand triangle up until you can see the far away object in the small opening you made with your hands. As you're looking at your faraway object, slowly move your hands closer until they finally touch your face. Whichever eye is now looking through the opening in your hands is most likely your dominant eye. Sometimes we find that if we compare the vision between each eye, one eye seems to see sharper than the other. This might simply be because your dominant eye might always see just a little bit sharper than your non-dominant eye, even with eyeglasses and contacts, but it also could mean that the prescription in your eyeglasses or contact lenses needs an update and a visit to your optometrist is needed. Go ahead and find a distant object to look at. Now take turns covering each eye as you're staring at that distant object. Let me know in the comment section if one of your eyes sees better than the other and if it's your right eye or your left eye that can see the best. Are you wondering if you have astigmatism? Let's go through this next test together to see if you have astigmatism and what type it is. This test is called the astigmatic dial and here's what to do. First, go ahead and remove your eyeglasses if you have them on. Since this test is done one eye at a time, go ahead and cover your left eye. With your right eye, stare right at the center dot the whole time. How do the lines look? Do you feel like any of them are blurry as you're staring at the center dot? If you have astigmatism, you'll notice that in one of the meridians, the lines are more blurry than the other meridian. For example, the lines from approximately 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock might be more blurry than the lines from approximately 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Now cover your right eye. Do any of the lines look more blurry than the other lines? If so, you probably have astigmatism. But what is astigmatism in the first place? Basically, our eyes have two curves on the surface of the eye called the cornea. The cornea is the piece of tissue where a contact lens sits directly upon. Astigmatism means that the two curves or meridians do not have the same shape or curve. One of the curves is more steep while the other might be more flat. When the curves of the surface of the eye have different amounts of steepness to them and they don't match the curve of the other, this is called astigmatism. And astigmatism causes light to converge to two Two points of light inside the eye instead of one point, creating blurry vision, starburst, and halos without glasses or contacts on that correct for the astigmatism. If the horizontal curve of the eye is flatter than the vertical curve of the eye, like an oval lying down on its side, the horizontal lines on the astigmatic dial appear more blurry, and this is called with the rule astigmatism. But if the vertical curve of the eye is flatter than the horizontal curve, like an oval standing up, then the vertical lines on the astigmatic dial will appear more blurry, and this is called against the rule of astigmatism. Let me know in the comment section below if you were able to see blurry lines and what type of astigmatism you just found out that you have. Imagine walking into your eye appointment and telling your eye doctor, I think I have with the rule of astigmatism. Do you think some eyeglasses could help fix that? they'd be pretty impressed. By the way, if you decide to back the video up right now and try this again with your eyeglasses or contacts on, and you happen to see that either the horizontal lines are more blurry than the vertical lines or vice versa, then you might have a prescription change and may need a new eyeglasses or contact lens prescription from your local optometrist. Let's do a quick color vision test. Go ahead and cover your left eye. What do you see in this image? How about this next image? Do you see a number? And then how about this image? And lastly, what do you see in this image? 
In the first image, you should have seen the number 8. In the second image, you should have seen the number 5. In this third image, you should see a number 29. And in the last image, you shouldn't see a number. In the first three images, if you didn't see a number in one or many of them, then there is a very good chance that you might have something called a color vision deficiency. And if you do see a number in the last image, then you probably have a color vision deficiency and you might need a more extensive color vision test with your local eye doctor. Go ahead and back the video up and repeat the test with your other eye. Certain eye conditions like macular degeneration, cataracts, and glaucoma can also affect your color vision. And in this case, it would be considered an acquired color vision deficiency secondary to eye disease. Color vision problems can be caused by both genetics and certain eye conditions. The type of color vision test we just did is called the Ishihara color vision test. What's interesting is that most people that are colorblind or who have a color vision deficiency are men. And it's quite common for me to have to explain to patients that they likely have a red-green color vision deficiency that came from their mother's side because the gene is sex-linked. Color vision deficiencies can happen in women, but it's much less common. With the red-green color vision deficiency, females can be a carrier for the gene, but won't express the gene. In other words, they could carry the gene but have no problem seeing all colors. But if they have a son and they pass the gene onto him, since the gene is sex-linked, her son will express the gene and will have a hard time with either red colors or green colors. Certain eye conditions not only affect how well we see color saturation, but also how well we see color contrast. Let me walk you through a color contrast sensitivity test. We'll do this one eye at a time, so start by covering your left eye. Which color on the screen looks different from the others? How about in this next image? Which color looks different than the others? Or do they all look the same? And here's the last one. Which one looks different from the others? If ocular disease is affecting your eyes, you'll have a much more difficult time being able to tell if one of the colors is different than the rest. Now back the video up, cover your other eye, and repeat the test again. So how did you do in your contrast sensitivity test? Did you get all of them correct? Let's test your peripheral vision next by doing a visual fields test. Start by covering your left eye. Focus on the center dot the entire time. As you stare at the center dot, you'll notice small dots lighting up in your periphery. Without staring at those dots in the periphery, try to count how many you see from the start of the test to the very end. Did you count 12? Let's go ahead and back the video up now, cover your other eye, and repeat the test again. So how did you do in your visual fields test? Some of the main reasons we perform visual fields tests on our patients are that we might be looking for glaucoma, which is a condition that affects our peripheral vision first and can eventually lead to total blindness, or if someone's on long-term drug therapy for certain autoimmune conditions like lupus and could be on a medication called Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine that can sometimes cause problems with our macula and attack our central vision. Or let's say a person's upper eyelids are beginning to sag lower and affect their upper visual field. In this case, we'll do something called a superior 64 or eyelid visual fields test. First with the eyelids taped up and next without any assistance with tape to see how much improvement someone gets when the eyelids are taped up. Next, let's do a test known as the cover test. This will be somewhat of an adjusted type of cover test that allows you, the viewer, to perform this test on yourself at home. Here's how you'll do it. First, locate a symbol or a point that is a little less than arm's length away. In the office, we'll test it about 16 inches or 40 centimeters. The symbol could be a small letter on your computer or on the cover of a book or something similar. Stare at that object with both eyes. While staring directly at the object, take turns covering each eye one at a time, alternating between the right and left eye as you continue to stare at the object. While alternating between each eye, if it looks like the object is stationary and not moving, then there's a good chance your eyes are aligned well. But if the object jumps back and forth, 
or jumps back and forth diagonally as you take turns covering each eye, then you most likely have an eye misalignment and your eyes are compensating for that throughout the day and a visit to your local optometrist might be needed to correct for this misalignment. I created a video recently about a certain type of lens that's used to correct for eye misalignments. Be sure to watch that video after this one if you either suffer from headaches or you just found out that you have an eye misalignment or both. Large eye misalignments are easy for others to see, but most eye misalignments are not visible to other people because their eyes are compensating for them in order to straighten the eyes out and avoid double vision. A common type of eye misalignment is called an exophoria. This means that when you close your eyes, they relax outward, meaning that your eyes have to travel a greater distance to converge when the eyes are open because they have to start from out here. The exophoria eye alignment is a common cause of headaches, eye strain, motion sickness in both children and adults, and even occasional intermittent double vision when the eyes are tired at the end of the day. The next test it will perform is called the Amsler grid. This test helps us know if our macula, or the part of the back of the eye that controls our central vision, might be affected by certain eye diseases that attack the central vision, like macular degeneration, solar retinopathy, central serous retinopathy, and so forth. Since this test is performed one eye at a time, go ahead and start by covering your left eye. Look at the dot in the center of the horizontal and vertical lines. While staring at the central dot, can you tell if the lines around the dot are all straight? Can you see each of the four corners of the grid in your periphery without looking directly at the corners? Are any lines wavy or missing? If so, you may have an eye condition that's affecting your ability to see high definition and detail in your central vision and a visit to your optometrist is necessary. Smash the like button if you're getting any value out of this video and let us know how you did on all these tests in the comment section below. Thanks for watching my channel on YouTube and subscribe for more helpful content.